Okay, I haven't made a video for a little while because I've been resolving some electrical issues that have occurred since mending the timing chain and everything that broke on the car. And um, it's been a little bit of an experience. I think a lot, most of it can be traced back to battery problems, which is why I thought I'd make a little video to tell you about BMW batteries, because I found out some stuff that I really didn't know. Let me show you at the back of the, back of the car where the battery is, and we'll just begin on what the difference is and what mistakes I made so that you don't have to make them too. Okay, on an F11, um, we're in the boot now, or the trunk, whatever you want to call it. Here's the battery. Now this happens to be a brand new uh, Varta battery that I've replaced mine with. But um, a mistake that I made uh, was treating these batteries like any other car battery. What are you on about, you might say? It is just a car battery. Well, it is and it isn't. Um, you might notice something on your BMW battery if you look closely at the label. Let's have So the three letters uh, to pay attention to there are that it's an AGM battery. What's an AGM battery? Well, I paid literally no attention to this whatsoever when I went and grabbed my trusty old battery charger to stick the battery on charge uh, after completing all the works on the car. And uh, long story short, trying to do a fast charge uh, on a AGM battery with a standard lead acid battery charger is a massive no-no. Don't do it. Um, it's not built to charge these kinds of batteries. They're very sensitive to the charge level. So um, the general gist I've got from reading up on them is that they like it low and long, like a trickle charge. But uh, you may get away with using a, a bog standard trickle charger, but um, a smart battery charger is what you need. And let's just, uh, I'll show you mine now. So let me be clear, you cannot charge an AGM battery with a standard car battery charger. What you're going to need is a smart charger, something like this, which says it's capable of charging AGM, gel batteries and things like that, which are usually for leisure applications actually, leisure batteries and things like that. But um, all these BMWs and probably Mercedes and that now are all using AGM batteries and you need to charge it slow and low and um, that's what these chargers do. They can measure the capacity and the, um, the charge state in the battery a lot more uh, effectively for the right kind of battery. In addition to general fault finding, um, I was gonna be buying um, some sort of diagnostic tool anyway because uh, I've managed to get away for far too long without one. And I wanted one that could do lots of different brands, not just um, download ISTA to use for BMW uh, on the laptop. So I wanted uh, an actual tool and that's what I ended up going, a little device from Autel here. But um, do that in another video if people wanna see. So in theory, the information that I would usually be paying attention to uh, when buying a car battery would be the ampere rating for the battery, the cold crank amps, so the CCA figure that you're gonna get, it's usually a few hundred, like eight or 900 uh, cold cranking amps. Uh, the physical size, and obviously that it's a 12 volt battery, and that's pretty much all I would usually look for. It's not enough, it's not enough. Uh, you also gotta consider the, um, the RC figure, which is on the battery. Uh, I'd never really even knew what this was before. RC is the reserve capacity of the battery. I think perhaps it's particularly more relevant with AGM batteries. Um, so whatever the figure is on this battery, you'll see that it's 160. That means that the reserve capacity of that battery is 160 minutes. It can supply 25 amps uh, for 160 minutes before the battery voltage drops below, I think 10.5 volts. So that's just one of the key parameters that's uh, important to make sure uh, is correct for the battery that you get. Because these, ba these cars are running a lot of systems uh, besides all the normal things. So even when the car's not in use, it's still running lots of little things. Uh, I know on the Range Rover, it'll still be operating. Uh, it's self-leveling and things like that, even when it's parked up and locked. And uh, perhaps the BMW does as well, I don't know. But yeah, it's always um, consuming some power and uh, that's one of the figures. Your amp hours figure that you've got, so what? It, let's just say it was 100 amp hours uh, that's rated for the battery. Uh, it's not quite what it sounds like uh, in terms of um, if it's 100 amp hours, it doesn't mean it can supply 100 amps for one hour. It's actually based over a 20 hour period. So 
um, if you divided it by 20 hours and you, your battery was 100 amp hours, that's 5 amps, and that's what, what it's actually based on. So um, the, the, the relationship is not linear, is all I'm saying, uh, with batteries. So if, uh, if, if that's where it comes from and it's worked out based over 20 hours, it does not mean you'll get 100 amps solidly for one hour before it goes. Uh, it'll be somewhere far less than that, probably about 60%, something like that, uh, if you did it over one hour. But yeah, it's just uh, many things to consider and just make sure you get the exact right battery and don't use the right wrong battery charger.